then by a semi-automatic process, this stuff is included in our subversion repository, and from the subversion repository, once by day, there is a rebuild stage and pushed out to the FIFA network. So that is what, that was actually a big error, because now everybody complains, hey, I've seen three days, we don't have any updates. And, well, we are trying to be deep in fear, FSF, free, EFSG free with a few exceptions we don't care for some, I'm a Debian developer, but at the moment I take off the Debian developers and put them in the tape. I've had some crazy free thing regulations not to include nice fonts and layouts. Typical example is, for example, the font installation guide, which is from Lehmann, has a very nice laid out font, very beautiful presentation, which you cannot ship because the fonts are commercial. We ship the source code of the document, but we cannot ship the font, so we cannot ship the nice PDF. And yeah, so, but in the Debian, on the tech life side, we do this. So these are the only differences to the Debian rules. So what are our tech life, our distribution channels? We have one DVD per year, it's normally in June around, and this stays for about one year, and you can go back quite some time. But most people nowadays use it very conveniently. We have, we call it Tech Life Network Distribution. You just download a very small installer, which is written in Perl. And on, on, for Windows, we have to ship a Perl installer and suck up all the installation. This changes daily, practically, on the CISA network. So, and this is where also the Tech Life Manager pulls stuff. Okay. But these people, so that was a big background of, on what tech life is. So now what, I mean, I assume, well, I don't assume much of what the, that you know about tech, but there are a few things you have to know. And the one thing is that that is something which creates always problems in the distributions is that we have configuration files that are stacked and non-stacked. So what are the non-stacked? And this is quite easy. This is like most configuration files we have in the distribution system. We have a, a hierarchy of trees, and the most, also the, 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 strong, the uppermost in the hierarchy file is picked up as configuration file. Think about whatever configuration file local user program often is shipped as general configuration in EPC, and you can have your home, in your home directory the same configuration file, but with exceptions, and then your personal copy is, has a higher priority. So, but then the old ones normally not. Well, it depends. So that if it's not stacked, then only yours is correct. In contrast to this, these are stacked. So we have every copy of the file. We are here considering not different names, but always the same file name. All files of the same are all evaluated. So these are two different levels. We will see examples in a minute. So what are, and these are for packages, for read distributors, they have so, I mean, I know I'm in, in the same position. I'm also packaging, but also writing. There are practically four files, more or less, well, this is a group of files, that have to be taken care of. That are the central configuration files that they like. The first one most people have heard about is this, the techmf.com. That's the general configuration file. Normally, not many things have to be changed. This is since 2012 stack. So the tech programs read all the tech and add config file files and evaluate them in, in the proper way. And update made from config, this is for embedding fonts. So there are, we know there are thousands of fonts in the tech system and how to the, the different engines, TBIPS, TBI, TBFM, XTBI, how they use fonts and which fonts are used. This is governed by this one. This is also since 2012 stack, so all the update map files are ready. In contrast to the non stack ones, these are format utilities. So this is a definition of formats, which are memory dumps. This is more probably from where well, we come to take this data and language definition files. In fact, they, are, they provide which hyphenations are available in the page system. So let's go through this four files or five groups one by one. So taking a config that has a lot of settings, but for distributions, I want you to only to remember you, the only thing you should change in most cases is the path, because that might change where you put the files. 
So these are the trees that are predefined in the tagmat config file. And here, R is the root, what, what in the tag life system how would be tag life 2012 at the moment. So the, and they are also in increasing order. So this is the, so, so, uh, well, actually, this one here is the uppermost, and this is the lowest. So a, a file that is found here overrides a file that is found here. Tagmat if this, this is where. 95% of the files are that about 20,000 or 50,000 files. They are here. Techmf local straightforward, this is what the system wide uses. Techmf main, that might get dropped with 2013 because there's, we, we had an idea to have the shareable, non shareable components, but it turned out nobody actually used it and you can use it even without this. And then are the, the system var so variable data, generated data, and configuration files. The user tree in home directory and the user. So these are the files, as the trees that are predefined. And distributors often change them. Um, for example, in Debian, this, this one is used as a share, take live, take him at this. This is user local, share, take him at this. Is this is user share, take life, take him F, and so on. So we change this. And the only thing is, yeah, typical example is, for example, take him at sysconfig. What was sysconfig? It's the system wide configuration for this whole installation. So it makes sense to have, for example, etc take him F. And this is then a fully standard, tech directory standard compliant tree. So what is the normal things we recommend to do for the reduced computers is adjustment of these tree locations. Maybe add some trees that make sense. This is something we do in Debian. And anything else should not be necessary. I mean, there are memory adjustments if, if, if you, but we have set up the values in a way that even if you start everything, you shouldn't find any memory limit. So, if you actually hit this, then, then you probably know what you have to do, or you can ask us. So as I said, this is a stacked one. So since all of them are red, you don't need to copy all of it. Just like here, create a new file document config and put in only the change values, nothing else. It's very easy if you check the Debian system. As a Currently, we see it with stage life 2012. So we have a very simple configuration file that consists of four lines. Three lines, just a few passes. Nothing else should be done. Okay, that was the easy case. So, what is the other thing? Config update map, configuration map. So, what is update map? Update map is a very strange piece. Actually, it's a meta processor for directives. So, what it is, it reads the config files. In the config files, there are references to map files. These map files contain font definitions and the update map merges them all together and generates proper configuration files for DVI, PDFM, PDF tag, DVIPS and some other programs because the formats likely differ here. And there are also some options here. So which font do you want the Adobe or the URE fonts? Then that is something important. Every change in the availability of font, what it means the user installs a new font package, the user removes the font package, needs adaption of these files and needs a rerun. This is one of the core errors for most distributors. They just don't do this, and then users are surprised that they manage, oh well, a well, lot of error messages. Since it is stacked, since 2012, it's stacked now. Local system adaptions can be easily handled by just putting them in Pachymac local or in some other tree. So they are local. In Debian, for example, we have the take life ships everything under user share take life, and other font packages in user share take net, and each one generates its own update map and config file. So that is something packagers distribution should remember. If you have a change in your availability of fonts, you have to rerun update map this, otherwise, and you have to regenerate the file or change it. Otherwise, the, the user will see strange things happening. So what is this new operation mode? I just mentioned just that you see what's going on. So all update map config files are read in these trees. 
And so this is the highest priority, this is the lowest priority, the highest priority. So you forget the user mode for now, just the system mode. For distributors, the user mode is not invoked. And then, so that means that, well, we have, for example, one, we ship in, in, in take life, then we have this file and this file. This file contains all the font definitions that are there in, in take life. This one in techmf main contains only the general settings. And the rest is up to the user. For example, on my system, I have several fonts I purchased or I, I install from different sources. I put them in techmf local and just put the respective maps file in this. That's all. And then run update messages, nothing else. People who have seen Take Life before on Debian remember this comment update, update map. That is gone. No need anymore. Because update map now reads all files. Okay, next configuration file, also very prone to get forgotten by redistributors, is the format utilities. Which format? So that is from a time. Yeah, when I look here, then probably everyone has used computers at this time. When Knut wrote this back in the 80s, there was not, there was speed and memory was a big issue. So he devised a, in his tech program on Metacon the mode, where, what init mode, which was a bit more evolved, but had more features, but it took more time, that loaded all the, the initial definitions and then dumps out a, a form, a memory dump, so to say, and then later runs just loaded this memory up. And this is, yeah, it's 2013 now, but this is still what's happening in the tech world. Yeah, you don't have to wonder. I mean, new formats like LuaTech got rid of this, but still we have the fact that these formats, these dumps have to be recreated. So, um, input file for this, yeah, one of the, so this format utility.com specifies the, how to generate this sum. This is the, 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 the content of the format utility.com. And it's not stack. So there's only one. You cannot override local stuff, but this is also something which normally not happen. Font editions are very common in this, in this system. Many people have to assist themselves. Think about in a, u, in a university department or, com, or a company, you have your private font, your, your, your I don't know, yeah, identities, so some company font, the university font, which you have to use. Is my new format are relatively rare, I have to say. Um, again, like with update maps, every change with the availability of formats needs a regeneration or adaption of this file and a rerun of format utility script. So this is something which also happens depending on your package manager from the distribution side, you install, you remove. This is something that has to be taken in account. Hyphenation patterns, that's actually a group. Um, since, I don't know, three years now, we have this dot dot lua, that's for lua tech, the definitions. Again, during format generation, these formats read in hyphenation patterns. And this is in a special format, and these, these hyphenation subpatterns are dumped together with the memory format. So that's all, yeah, back in the 80s, could everything be read nowadays more easier, but well, that's transition in progress. So if change is to hyphenation, and this language start, lunch, dev, and that Lua, they define for different engine, for the late, so this is for the late tech based, this is for the e tech based, and this is for Lua tech based. And again, if something changes, please remember something changes in the hyphenation, you have to repeat the format. Otherwise, it doesn't match. I mean, that is something what, what I remember last year, we got the question, what's going on? We installed a new hyphenation, but I, when I run late, it tells me not available. Well, the format was not regenerated. That's the simple point. Exception is that this one is a runtime file, so you don't have to do anything but to fix it with it. You know, so other things uh, with respect to take life is you, if you want to packages, you know, you have to know a bit about the structure. So we have a hierarchy of packages. On the top are schemes. We have currently nine schemes. They collect together. Well, they have overlapping contents. So they, they are not exclusive. So typically a scheme, small context, scheme normal, scheme everything. So these are the top levels. 
That is what in our installation process, the user gets asked on the front side, what do you want to start? Do you want to have everything? Or we have a CMT tag which tries to resemble the key tag at the time. In the middle, there are collections. There are 80, 84 at the moment, as I think yesterday. They are non overlapping. It, uh, that means they are a partition of the content. This is important why package managers are not, distribution packages, not happy when one file is in two packages. I mean, there are conflicts, you know this. Probably so, these collections will keep them uh, non overlapping, so a partition of the contents. So they collect related material. So we have latex, formats, extras, or some extra strange formats for Arabic language support, all kinds. And on the lowest level, we have package, take live packages. We have now 2000, what was 2490 something. This is the smallest unit. They relate directly to what the, an author, a package writer, uploads to C++ in 99.9%. Typical examples, Pima, comma script, PGF, things you, you might, what you use, for example, when you use later, use package PD, PGF or something. So these are the, this is the hierarchy of packages. And other things that are necessary for packaging, at the end you will have to be contact with this beast here. It's before 2007, that was not existing, but there are thousands of single files, which might also be nice, but they were in XML, and who wants to parse XML? Nobody. Um, so when I rewrote this, it, it, I changed the format into something much more uh, adjustable to, well, command line parsing, Unix tools. It's just package description files of DDN. If you know what the packages file in DDN are, they are stanzas separated by an empty other of a new line, and that's it. So we have this this state life database describes the whole state of one installation, meaning also the whole state of the state life network, even when it's compressed. It's a simple text file, so plain lines. We have revision numbers for single packages. This is always generated from static content, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of Perl models for those. I mean, I come back to this later on. So how does it look like? Very easy. But if you have seen one of the packages file in Debian, you know, well, there's name upload, that's one of the package name, or name memoir, and then other rest, and in between is an empty line. So it's a sequence of key value pairs, separated by an empty line or more, and you have one group per package, so that's take life package, and we have some meta packages. So uh, that is, for example, an example I copied from two days ago, the Droid font. So here's a Typical examples, you have the name, what kind of categories, revision, this is our internal revision number from the subversion system, the highest change revision of all the containing files. This is what it is based on, our tech life manager base is updated purely on the revision number, non, not on version numbers, because version numbers in the tech life are horrible, they are going up, down, wobbling around, so they, they are not definitely always increasing, but with some version number, revision numbers we are. Then we have a short and a long description, I, I delete the rest of the long description, they are taken from the test catalog. We have execute, we will discuss this later on, this can be forgotten, this might be interesting, doc files, so that are documentation files. Then here comes index by one space, the list of documentation files. They can have some tags here, oh, that would be really nice. Then we have source files, which are used to generate the run and run files. These are the ones that have to be actually installed because they are used for running. And then there is additional catalog data, like where it is found on the CTAM network, when it was last updated on the catalog, what is the license according to the catalog, and what is the version. So this is one of the, of the files. So you might ask where this is, we, we mentioned this exit, I mentioned this exit view, and I mentioned the four configuration files, the, well the first is the take map config, but then the font, the hyphenation, and the format. So these, where is this information coming in? This information is coming exactly from this exit view. Think about it 
as a like the post install action trigger. You have to do something. So here are the, the execute statements. The one is add map, add mixed map, and add country map. That's simple. In this update make config file, there can be either a statement map, blah, blah, mixed map, blah, blah, country map. Uh, so typical line is this one. It means you should add a line map grotesk to your update map.config file. And when you remove this package, you should remove this map line again because it's not here anymore. And mixed map and country map have different for country map, but it's just so the, for the formats, we have add format. Don't ask me why I have sometimes lower and sometimes upper. It's just historically, I think. Um, that is a bit more complicated. This is not the line exactly as it should end up. So it gives the name of the format, which engine. So the PDF latex format is compiled with the PDF latex engines. This gives the language stuff. This is where the pagination patterns are and then some options what should be run. From this line, we have the Perl code, but you can easily pass it yourself. One line for formatutility.com has to be generated. And for hyphen, we have, that's getting more complicated. We have the name, pass, for example. Then these are configuration options, how many, where you can put the hyphen. You cannot split the word in one character on the left side and all the rest. Uh, some rules, linguistic rules that are not allowed, so they are put here. And then loader files and hyphenation patterns file and some exceptions if they are. From this, again, you can generate the SQL code available in a nice form, but you can easily do it yourself by reading the specification. Uh, generate the, the, the language stuff, the stuff of your file. So these execute statements have to be taken into account. So if you package something, take like four distribution, you and you split into smaller units, you have to think about, well, if I if my the user installs something that relates to one of these execute statements, then then the package manager has to do something. So packaging paradigma, how do we package this? We are now at 3.6 gigabytes that is take life. Um, that makes it, first of all, I, I didn't count the number of files. And that makes it very, as of now, completely impossible to do anything by hand. I mean, checking everything by hand, it takes years. So there are different ways to package, to split or not split. So the first one, I would say, all or nothing. There's one distribution package which contains everything. You have one package, it's called Tech Life, or Tech, or whatever. Um, yeah, first method. It has some advantages and some disk. Collection splitting, you see split at the collection level. Uh, single, single packages, so you split one distribution package, like whatever, merges as a next to one Tech Life package, and then there's mixed mode. Let's go through them. So all or nothing, so the advantage of the all or nothing is, yeah, well, it's easy. You don't have to care. The good thing is you don't have to care for the configuration file. You just install what we are shipping, because if you remove, then you remove everything. Right. So that's the nice thing, but I wouldn't recommend it. I, we get even more in other distributions already complaints. Oh, it's 200 megabytes. It's too big. So if whenever a user wants to install tech, has to install 3.6 gigabyte, I, so I'm not sure if most people will be happy. So I don't know any distribution is uh, using this at the moment. Uh, hmm? Yeah, well, that's a different how to build it. Uh, the Debian also uses four huge tarballs. But what you ship in Debian at the end, you build from the, these four huge tarballs, we built 90 or 100 binary packages. And this is what the user installs and sees, because the user doesn't see the big process. This is different if you are a port system, or in BSD, where you have to download everything, or I don't know, some other distributions, I don't know. So that might be a real problem, yeah? So collection splitting, the advantage is that it is somehow nice to the package manager of the distribution, because as I said, Collections are a partition of the content, so there's no overlap. So you know if you have a file which is contained in one collection, the package, 
then it is definitely not in other, so there are no file conflicts for the distribution package manager. And there are not too many individual files. So that was when, when I proposed in 2005 to package state light to Debian. I said, okay, what should we do? Should, as I proposed in the take live mailing list, these different options, say, should we have one Debian package for one take live package? That would be, yeah, at that time, 2000 something packages when, in, well, the Debian crowd cried at me, never, because the good bubble suddenly the number of. Anyway, so that is, that's a nice thing. The disadvantage is that the packaging is not trivial because you have to collect all all containing packages, you have to collect all the execute statements. So then you have to invest a bit of time and to automatize this because you don't want to do it, well, maybe you want to do it once per year, but you might do it more often. So Debian and then Ubuntu, well, the Ubuntu just paid for this in Debian, which it doesn't change. So package splitting, so this is straightforward, very fine grain, nice, simple, clear. Allows also to do very quick fixes for single packages if you want. Disadvantage is the huge number of packages, as I mentioned before, 2000 or 3000, I don't know. So, this is something you have to think. As far as North Fedora and SUSE are taking this approach. Okay, mixed mode, um, I don't know. I cannot see anything, but that I know that some, some is the variant. Okay, let's do a distribution breakdown. From what I know, I gathered around, I searched a bit the internet for what, what they are doing. So Debian Ubuntu is, we know since Edge, we have uh, Take Life in it. It was in 2005. It's based on collection splitting. Fedora has Take Life since uh, FC6 and uses packet splitting. SUSE since SLAE, whatever, Enterprise 11, and OpenSUSE something. Package splitting, FreeBSD uses also package splitting since 2009. OpenBSD was one of the first after, after our uh, um, uh, Debian in 2007, which is the only one using a mixed splitting with about four packages. NetBSD, there was recently on our mailing list a big discussion how to do. Then we have, I, well, it's not completely correct to use discuss this thing, but we have macOS. We have since MacTech since many years is based on Take Life, ships Take Life as is with some graphical interface, nice, very good integration. On Windows, we have Protex, which is a slightly repackaged. We have Take Life by Tech, practically the same, and we have the independent MixTech distribution. So let's go through the distributions a bit in detail. So Debian. So Woody had TTech1, Sarge TTech2, Edge TTech3, and TTech2005, where we had both parallel. So we, we tried for some time, we didn't know what will happen. TTech, at that time, TTech was, it wasn't clear how it would continue. But then since then we had 2007, squeeze 2009, and VC will be high 2012. So well, more or less almost what is also currently on track. Ubuntu had a hard time a bit to take life because they always released just before or froze the, the redistribution just, just before I could get out the packages for Debian. So hardly had to like 2007. All these ones, precise, I think that is the biggest one, precise just, just released in April and the Debian packages came out in April. So that didn't work out nicely. But, well, yeah, I mean, I have a real life also. Quantar, <coughs> so the, the, the current development has taken life 2012, and for precise, there are PPAs for 2012. So we have one package per collection. We have, um, that's also something I will mention a bit later on, that the ar architecture dependent files, so the real binaries, not split, the real binaries are built from a different pack source package and also ships a different binary package bit while we want to keep duplication to a minimum. And if you know a bit about Debian, well, if you have a package that is for every architecture, so, or then uh, any, then, then you don't have a complete duplication, you just have it once in the archive. But if you have to compile something, then you have to every, for every architecture support it in Debian. So we keep that to a minimum and ship everything uh, in architecture independent files. Our Tech Life route, this is now about 2012, is user share Tech Life that's new since 2012. So
So we have user shared take life taking match this, user shared take life taking that. We add an additional tree, which we call taking match DBN, which is user shared taking that, where packages that are not in, well, we are packaged separately from take life are in installing some. And we have something I think that is the only distribution actually having this persistency that the requirement in DBN, you probably know, persistency of administrative changes. So if someone changes, some of the hyphenation patterns or the format definitions and removes the package and installs the package, these changes have to be persistent. That is something particular to Debian. I don't know any, well, Ubuntu, any other distribution who has this. And that creates a lot of problems. Of course, it's not so easy. Fedora, well, we have Fedora, yeah, Tech. 2007 came into six. And 2010, interesting, is available in 13 and 14, and 11 from 13 to 7, and now we have backports for the others. They use a single package splitting again, so one, file, uh, one Fedora package for one tech package. They did very big thanks from our side, from our data side, a very detailed license check. In the consequence of this, a lot of packages have been either removed or check with the original authors, please give us a, a decent license statement. So that created over the last years a nice clean up of over many things. Uh, there are no persistency of administrative changes. The post-installation script of Fedora just changes configuration files down into the shared life. And well, if the administrator wants to change something, she right, so gets lost out. SUSE has 2010, so these are, I mean, if I, especially outside even if one of the distributors wants to correct me, I'm open, but this is what I could grasp from the net. So we have now 12.2 has both, and the, the uh, development version has 2012. Again, single package splitting. They use, they merge these two trees, take them at and take, our take them two trees into one user share taking map. That might be something that in any way happen next year also for the whole take life distribution that we got rid of this split. They have the configuration files in etc taking map and set it up as uh, taking map sysconfig, but no persistence if you change it one or something that it, and you remove and reinstall it get lost. As our operating system, uh, free BSD, one pack also, I couldn't really make out from cursory look how they, they handle this. OpenBSD is very long time, since 2007. That was one of the first. That has an interesting splitting in base, minimal, full, and top. How this is handled with overlapping files, I don't know. But it's since, it is, yeah, since 2007 up to 2012. NetBSD recently, someone came up at the take life distribution list and someone I want to package for NetBSD. I said, please look at the other BSDs, even if you hate them. Uh, Mac OS, I mentioned already, has a very nice wrap up into MacBook. I hardly recommend it, but it's very well done. Windows, again, has take life upstream. We provide our own installer, graphics installer, wizard installer, and we have Protex. And then there's the independent WigTech. Actually, now in the tech world, there are practically only two big, di uh, well, two distributions. It is Take Life, which is for everything, and MicTech, which is for Windows. And Take Life is also for Windows, but MicTech has more, um, how to say, well, since it targets only Windows, it's, it's more streamlined for Windows. That's to be. But nobody. <laughs> 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 okay, what I want to, to, to close is with, I, I mentioned already many things that distributors should take care into uh, when they are packaging take life. I want to come up with, again, with a few warning and common defaults. The first one is, I never use take life. I, I have no idea what take is, but I package it now. It sounds crazy, but we got, I, I have seen this, not too, not, well, and I can only see, yeah. Okay, forget it, because it's impossible. It's not just running configure, make, make, install, and then back right. it. No. You have to please install it, please run it, please get to use what, what the system 
runs and after he sees the file effect change. Improper configuration file handling is by far the biggest problem. What I mentioned all before, yeah, shipping, typically example, you ship parts of the life, you split it, but you ship the update may config file which we have in the distribution, which contains all the forms. And that doesn't work out. So that is something while, well, the last 20 or half an hour I was talking about this configuration. That was, in the last years, often the case. A problem, especially for the BSD, is what is upstream. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the DVD distribution channel that changes once. During this time, we are also creating tar, tar files, so whatever. But between these releases, once per year, we have daily updates to the state life net distribution, but there are no revision numbers, there are no SEN, there are no date stamps, there is nothing. And there is no history. So we, the, the CTAR network cannot keep copies for every day. That's impossible. Nobody has. And that's a big problem for BSD ports, as far as I understand, because they have to download a fixed set, and the scripts have to work on this set. But the problem is, I mean, this, the upstream, the download for port for building, is a moving target, and then often the port feeling breaks. So that is something which is a problem. Yeah, I have to say this is something I, I'm happy to, with anyone having suggestions, what we can do, but we don't have neither the disk space, nor the network capability, nor the resources to keep a history of every day. Yes? How big would it be? Probably, if, if you keep for one year, I don't know, 10 gigabytes, 15? It's more, it's more that someone has to set up and link it into the CETA distribution network. That is the problem. I mean, of course, or on the tax server where we will be, where the main artist is. I mean, there's something, yeah, there's something. We are open if someone just says, I mean, there are scripts, where everything is available. Someone, if you think it's, it makes sense and you want to have this, what is something one can discuss? I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if the tax server is happy about this. So, but this, I know from PSD this is a real problem. I mean, yeah. Um, binaries and source. Um, as I say, Tech Life has its own distribution channel. We have our own installer, we have our own package manager, and we ship binaries. We don't repeat them during the year. We have, as I mentioned, 18 architecture OS combination. The build process is a huge pain to get updated binaries from all the uh, builders sits on time. We don't have automated build system, we don't have anything like this. I mean just a few volunteers. So we cannot do this during the year. There are private independent repositories so you can get updated binaries. If you want I myself have one for a Japanese case binaries where we keep stuff so that we can do. But in general it is not. But our source repository, the subversion repository, changes permanently. Thomas Alopita is changing in the packaging way permanently. And that does so that means that it often does not relate the source repository to what actually is shipped. So you have to think about as redistributor, as in a distribution, what I'm I basing my binaries on on the subversion, on the release version. So this is something you have to take a bit care. Okay, last and big warning, whatever the user tries for, don't ship the tech life manager. First, it will probably not work because you have no tech life manager. Second, you don't want an independent program messing around with the files that are under your distribution package manager control and change them, update them, change the empty file sums or whatever. You don't want it. Whatever the user says, you just say, no, please. <laughs> I mean, there is something, I have a patch for user mode test life manager. Nobody ever tested it. I called for tests. It's still open. Something that users can install the tech, also use the tech life manager to manage their home directory and use so to say the whole tech life infrastructure which we provide at tech life 
to update and install new packages into their own system. But you should never allow the tech life manager to mess around in your system. I mean, if, it's your distri if the distribution works in this way, then it's okay. But normally, I don't think that is any distribution wants outside programs to change this something. Recommendations, this is what I'm closing. So get to know the system. Yes, I mentioned before, I don't know tech life. I don't know tech, but I package it. No. Get to know. Install it. Run the normal installer. It's not, I mean, at the end, this, this is for normal use is not such a pain. I have on my laptop, which is a bit aged, I don't know how many installations of that life parallel. Learn Perl. Um, there are all the infrastructure, everything that that life is driving with, everything is programmed in Perl. All the scripts, all the updates, all the things you see that is everything in Perl, all the access to the database, to the, to the execute thing, all is wrapped up in Perl modules that are documented. So if, yeah, it helps. So look around, please. Also, if you think about a new distribution that is not based on one of the already, and look around what others have done. Take life, it was first packaged in, in 2005, and we have now many packages, many distributions are shipping. If you want to package it in you, look around. What I mentioned before is one of these BSD variants, what is net BSD wants to start from scratch when there are three in or two independent other BSD packages. I mean, yeah, waste of time. Select the paradigm that is fits your needs. So for your distribution, for your political, also this is often a political, and given it was a political, I mean, that there were no technical reason, uh, that, re also that fits your distributional requirements, this paradigm of so everything or single package or individual. And last, please contact. Yeah, we want to know, we can help you, we have enough experience in this kind of stuff. So if there are any problems of this context, so where can you contact us? So the main web page for Tech Life is there. There are a lot of sub pages. The main coordination is done on Tech Life Tactical. This is, this is not user support. Please send your users out. Please don't put them in. If you have a request, this is for development. We often get questions from users, we often help, but it's for development. We have a specific mailing list for distributions. It's not very active, they have distros, but this is something where, where people from practically all the distribution maintain us as a subscribe and have their knowledge. And if you want to contact <coughs> me and have questions, then I'm also. Okay, I think it's exactly my time I have. Thanks for the attention, and yeah, I hope you didn't part of this. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I'm sorry? Why is there so many people who spell that like the start? You mean the binary? Sorry, what page life consists of a source tree which feeds the binaries and a run tree. And they are both in one subversion hierarchy. But if you get the source dot part of the set and you make configure, make make install or make world, you don't get the tech system. You get the binaries. The binaries have to be put in the right place in the run part. In the run. That is yeah, also a thing. Um, simply because it doesn't make sense to, to have, to, well, as I mentioned before, the Debian, the source, the building of the binary, it says it's not so, I mean, it's big, we have, I don't know, 50, 50 programs that are compiled, but it's still manageable, while the whole tree with 3.9 gigabytes is not something. Other than that, it's not complicated besides, yeah, on, on strange architectures, we have a build strip if you run it, you get all the binaries at the end. Uh, by default, everything is actually linked. By default, uh, yeah, these are the defaults. But you can easily adapt it. So in Debian, of course, we have dynamic linking. We, we have the binary. We have a uh, so shared library for the cafeteria. So, yeah.
Any other questions? Good, thanks. 